I know, but just in terms of, well, I don't know. Let me see if Kim, Kim yeah, or somebody. I, I unfortunately have a hard stop at 630. Okay, that's fine. Let me too. I Chris. started it live, so that just means it's recording. So, but also, I'm hoping that that will show us if there's like anybody. No, okay. Right. No, there's only the six of us here. No, I know, I know. I checked, but I just texted Kim to say. I tried the um, link at first and nothing happened, but then I went back in and tried it again, and here I am. So. Maybe people are, are having trouble with that link. I don't know. Wait, Chris, are you on the Quabbin? Where are you? I am in the Yellowstone. Um, um, this is Yellowstone Lake here. Nice. Beautiful. But I'm not really there. I'm just there in my dreams. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful place. Big, mm. big lake. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should all choose virtual backgrounds and see what we think. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. I like uh, Tracy's. It goes with here, her yeah. sweater and it looks yeah, very it nice. <laughs> Until you have to shovel. That's true. Let's see. What do you? I, I went to a coffee cart. Yeah, uh, there's coffee. That's cart. good. Yeah. Oh. Yours is in a different country, isn't it? Where yeah, is it that's uh, Denmark. Denmark oh, looks nice. I used to have a roundabout, and then I had a virtual conference last week. I had lots of transportation backgrounds. So. But now we have a quorum ish. <laughs> you do. Great. Okay, well, let me, um, since Kim is here in spirit, let me, uh, I'll, I'll say those things. Hold on, let me find that. So, I mean, so what is what what is the council saying about how long virtual meetings are extended for? Is that a so the council will stay virtual until the third? Okay. Then they're, gonna, then they're gonna have their first organizational meeting on the third. Got it. At, at that time, they will decide what the council will do. The new it is, council. Mm -hmm. It is determined that everybody else is probably gonna stay virtual. Well, yeah, so I met with the town manager the other day and he was asking if virtual is good or not good. I mean, I think it works fine. It's convenient. I mean, you don't have to drive, you don't have to bike and it's easy if you have to multitask or take care of kids. And I mean, it's not so great for attendees. But you know uh, what, that, I think but, it's actually pretty good for attendees um, in terms of like the planning board. We get a lot more attendees now than we used to because, you know, people didn't want to come out at night. But oh, sure. Like last night, yeah. we had 40, over 40 uh, attendees in addition to, you know, the regular people who came there. So um, that was pretty good. And I don't think they would have come. If no, for sure. I agree with that part. But I think it's hard as an attendee just, um, you know, if you don't know who else is in the room and that kind of thing. Like, so the town manager had brought up a what if you were watching on Amherst media or something that's true then it would be the same experience but mm -hmm. you know if you are in person at least you know who else is there at least yeah. in person and so yeah. I'm, that's the part i always sort of miss you know particularly if there's a six hour council meeting or whatever and you have you end up having to message your friends and be like hey are you there no i'm there are you going to talk now you know it's just like so it is i do kind of miss that camaraderie a little and it would make a huge difference in Zoom webinar if they ever allowed the attendees to see who are the other attendees. <laughs> I don't, yeah. Just to even know that like people are present, you know, as you're saying, Chris, like as an attendee, an attendee wouldn't even know that there were 40 people present unless the chair or somebody on the planning board said, oh, by the way, there's 40 people present. Yeah, I think um, Doug Marshall usually does that because he wants to um, know who's going to speak. So he says, right. well, there are 40 people present. How many people of you want to, you know, make public comment? And sure. then, um, so anyway, so that's the way they find out. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I can read the statement, Kim, unless you want to. Oh, yeah. I was going to say we should start. And I All right. I have it. I pulled it up. So it says, pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or telephone. 
no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via logical, technological means. So I guess at this point, right, we all just say aye, that we're all here. So we yep, have four of here. us and uh, hopefully Marcus will join us at some point. Um, he's, the, he's the one with little kids. Nobody else has little kids. <laughs> little kids who are needy so um okay Kim do you want to yes start so, start? Um, the, um, so we just called this meeting to order and um are there any announcements no um and comments from any of us who might want to be public <laughs> <laughs> if there's anyone any other public um, and so the first agenda item is um, approval of the minutes. All oh, right, I was supposed to send those around again. Okay, I will move we approve the minutes of October 7th um, and November 4th, 2021. Yes. Um, any, uh, any other, any, any further comment before we um, vote on the minutes. I, I just have a, a quick word change sure. under East Pleasant Street sidewalks, number four. <laughs> on B, Community Preservation Act funding would not apply here. I, I thought maybe saying since the sidewalks are in the public way, instead of here are the sidewalks are in the public way. I think that R needs to come out ARE and just change it to since. Yes, since. Yes, right. I see what you're saying. Since the sidewalks got it. Yep. Okay. So oh, hi, Marcus. Hi, Marcus. Hey, Marcus. Hey, guys. We're in the middle of um, discussing the minutes from October 7th and okay. November 4th. If you have any comments, now is the time to do so. No, no comments. Okay. I had one more comment for page two. Oh, yes. Uh, under eight. Page. Uh, Lincoln Avenue is going to close at the end of this fall semester. Do we want to say one section is going to close? It's not the whole street's going to close. That's correct. We could make that clarification. Okay. I believe it's closing effective December 20th. Is that correct, Guilford? The parking lot is closing December 20th, the one adjacent yes. on the corner mm -hmm. of Mass Ave and Lincoln. Do we, do we want to specify what section is closing, like one block it's at the, the yeah. university end is closing or? Yeah. yeah. So, it, so Guilford, is it closing at Fearing? Is that where it's going to be closed? Closing at North Hadley Road. Okay. Between North Hadley Road and Mass Ave. So North Hadley Road is a little diagonal road that runs next to Southwest between sort of like Sunset and Lincoln. Well, not really next to, but yeah. And it closes Monday. It closes mon the 20th, right? Yeah. Okay. 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 okay, so all those in favor of the minutes as proposed? Bernie, yeah. Okay, great, that's unanimous. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> so those two minutes are um, approved. And um, are you going to discuss the TSO? Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to just, I mean, I had included these items just as old business because they're things that have come before us before. And I wanted just to provide quick updates on them. Um, so the TSO recommendations on North Pleasant Street, the changes west of Kendrick Park. Um, I meant to send this around, but today got too busy. But um, TSO, um, they did have their public hearing a few weeks ago and they got some good comments. Um, after that, I followed up with them. We had ho been hoping to have a meeting last week with them. We didn't have quorum, but there were some concerns raised at the public hearing about the idea of the southbound cyclists and how they would be accommodated and where they would be accommodated and what would be the safest. So our original recommendation from TAC was to have the cyclists and the pedestrians 
who are going southbound as well as, of course, northbound pedestrians all sort of share a space similar to on University Drive because it seemed like there might not be enough room to have a bike lane, a southbound bike lane in the road. And I know I had also been concerned just about having, I get concerned about the, the more potential conflict points you have. Like if you're gonna have bicycle, like you're gonna, you're gonna have to have those cars exiting all those different driveways. I think there's nine driveways there exiting, both looking for pedestrians at the driveways, I mean, at the sidewalk and then also at the road. It just seemed like confusing to me. And I like to try to minimize those points. Um, and I almost got hit just the other day, not in this area, but walking next to Amherst Coffee where a car was pulling out. And as a pedestrian, I was not walking where they were looking as they pulled out and they almost ran me over. I said, oops, sorry. <laughs> so, I mean, it happens a lot. Um, but there were concerns just about the potential conflicts between cyclists and bikes if everybody is sharing the same space and the importance of having a separated space. Myra Ross from the Disability Access Advisory Committee spoke at the public hearing um, about that. And so it did get amended slightly. Um, I can pull up the TSO's motion or I can just read it. So what they recommended is that they recommended that um, so this was TSO's recommendation from their meeting on December 9th, which they held after the public hearing. And then the council voted in favor of this 10 to zero. So they supported um, changing the traffic flow one way to one way traffic northbound from McClellan to Triangle. They, they supported creating back and angled parking spaces on the Eastern side of the street. They supported prohibiting parking on the west side of the street and removing the grass belt on the western side. And then they also included some following conditions, including having a complete streets approach to uh, maximize bicycle and pedestrian safety and use, including considering a separate southbound bike lane for cyclists. And then also consulting with the Disability Access Advisory Committee on the placement and the number of accessible spaces. And the question about the parking regulations and how many will be permanent and how many will be metered and stuff is not yet addressed, but that will be continued mm -hmm. at a later time. I mean, the main thing was to focus on the design. So that's what I got out of that. So I don't know, Guilford, you were there too. Did you have anything to add? Those? You're, you're muted, Guilford. The ones you hear all the furnace noises going on in my office. Oh, is that what? Oh, yeah, I was wondering. I started to look around. You know, so. Every, every I, once in a while, it rumbles. Yeah, um, I, I thought I got rid of the mice down here. I had a dorm room like that. It was crazy. But so, so I was looking for the the actual motion. I haven't found it yet, but that's pretty much uh, what they I said. have. I have a motion, Guilford. I can I can email it around to the TAC members just so everybody has a copy. Um, but that's what the council said. I mean, so one thing that didn't come up in the motion is just in terms of shifting the street to the west, like in order to accommodate the trees. I didn't see that anywhere in their motion. But, but I'm assuming, Guilford, that the DPW will still be looking at that, right? Yes. Okay. We'll probably set it aside for a couple of months, but... Uh... Yes, we'll probably have try to have something finished up by construction in the construction season. And do you think so? Some of this, like with adjusting the parking, that would probably be able to be done next season, right? Even if some of the other parts aren't in. Yes. Um, we um, have to rip up. Oh. Yeah, I mean, you're going to have to widen the road, right, to accommodate the back end parking. So you've got to remove that grass strip first, I'm assuming. Well, you don't need to wide. I mean, if you're making it a one way street, I don't know how much you need to rip up the. I, it depends on, I guess it depends on the angle that the angle parking is, but mm. it just doesn't seem wide enough to have. I think we'd have to go out and measure it. But well, yeah. I was I was walking in that vicinity the other day, and I noticed that there were a lot of people at the park and what, you know, with little kids. And what I noticed that they were doing is they were parking in the permitted parking spaces on the far side of the road. 
and it's so it seems like that's not being that enforced right now and i guess there'll probably be less kids there in the middle of winter and so on but it yeah. seemed like but it seemed like you know just to try to set that up for like the parking as soon as we can or whatever just because the park will get used come april come may or whatever so. there, there, there definitely seems to be some group that like has made it an informal meeting place for kids and families I mean, there's a certain time of day when it's just like chock full of people and it just, it's really in interesting to watch. Cool. Okay, we can't hear you. Didn't you say a priority is um, putting in the crosswalks on McClellan? Like, is that going to happen soon? That that actually now has to all go together because it is it's quite a bit that has to be re rearranged in that area to make it all fit. But it, it hopefully we'll get it in next construction season. Um, just one thing, because um, you know the the sidewalk that just ends at a cur at a curve. I wonder if you could if if there's any way because that's totally an ex the only way to access it the um, park if you're in a chair now is from the other from the um, other side of the road um, where there actually aren't parking spaces. I wonder if, if, if there could just be some kind of temporary thing at least right there where the curve, you know, where the new, the new thing comes and it just comes to a curb and then it just stops right there. So Kim, are you talking about it's just north of McClellan where yeah. there's like a paved area and then it, but well, doesn't that connect into the path? Doesn't that connect to the? It, yeah, it's part of the, it's the path that goes uh -huh. up through the park, which is right. Very, and on right. that, on that um, East Pleasant side of the road, um, there are curb cuts. So you could, you can get a chair, a wheelchair or something up onto that sidewalk and then and then into the into the park but the the path just ends like and it doesn't have you know it ends at a, at a curb and then there's a curb there so you can't get a you know a stroller or right a chair up that curb yeah no it doesn't really run along that side of north pleasant that much it seems <laughs> Well, but it, but it ends there. Oh, no, it just, I just wonder if there's oh, a for sure. simple solution of just like putting a little paving or something right where that sidewalk is just for as a temporary solution. We can look at it. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I was also thinking about on North Pleasant Street, just, you know, as I was walking by, right, that the driving school that they use those metered spaces for like there to practice parallel parking and things like those are that's all going to go away right and i think they actually even use that on the road test that so the no, registry no of They're course they will uh, somebody had mentioned to me though that if you change the um, the route for the road test i mean this is not our concern of course but if you change the route for the road test like it has to be reapproved by the rmb or something oh <laughs> well, they don't like, give road tests just... in. yeah they do they give road tests in Amherst. Yes, they do. They do it as oh, a really? convenience to their students yeah. oh, cool. so that you yeah. don't have to wait for like 90 days to get it at the RMV. And also you're doing it in the vehicles that you practice in and on the streets that you practice on. And yeah. yes, they do it a lot on the weekends. Yeah. Just in case you wanted to do it, it's a detail work for the officers. So they get the detail pay versus, versus regular pay. So they... Ah. Oh, wow, it's a it, sweet deal then. Wait, which are you talking about the RMV people? Yes. Oh, the ones who are the driving instructors? Oh. Or the driving examiners? Yeah. Yeah. They get, they get you get yeah, I mean you pay a surcharge. I'm a licensed driving instructor with them. That's how I know. Okay. Okay. Um, so that was all about that. So I mean, one thing interesting is that, you know, I was looking, I mean, one of the reasons I had originally proposed having it off the street level, in addition to the conflicts is I just wasn't sure how much how much room we have on the street, like with all these different things we want to do, including shifting the road, having the back end, saving the trees, everything. Um, but one thing I was reading about, and um, 
And I was at this virtual conference that I was helping host, like with Mass DOT last week. There was a session about counterflow bike lanes, but there's also this thing called like bike bike streets or something. It's where, and they do it more in Europe, um, and where you you make the car traffic one way, but the bike traffic can actually be two ways. Sorry, I think Eve's in the audience. Can we? Oh yeah, let's let her in. Gilbert, can you let her in? Yep. Great. Thank you, Kim. Mm -hmm. uh, she's not moving yet. There she is. She's here. Takes a while to move over. Thanks, y'all. So hey. anyway, so I, I, I mean, I thought that was just an interesting concept. Like, I think if you have a very traffic calm road, that that can always be an option. So, but it hasn't been done. It's been done in Cambridge and Somerville and some parts of Eastern Mass. It hasn't really. But we still need done. the space. No, you still need the space. But the idea is just that, like, the level of car traffic, like, drops so much that it's basically like a bike boulevard and. I mean, yeah, the yeah. cars are mainly there just to park for the park. And you have, but you'd have to have like a permanent right. barrier or some some barrier between the, the bike lanes. No, I mean the, the idea car. is that you don't you don't have a par bar barrier, Marcus. But oh, okay. I mean, it's just but yeah. I'm I not sure. I'm not sure, I'm not sure we're ready. I'm not sure we're ready for that. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. But I can I can street. send you I can send you some links. To yeah, it. if you could, that would be really good yeah. because it's just you know there's a number of. There's going to be a number of, um, uh, sorry, uh, driveways to get in and out of. And then there's all the right, traffic right. going in, right. you know, backing in and everything. Oh, so I agree. I agree. I mean, now that's, yeah, that's one of my concerns about the counterflow lane, too. But, I'm, okay. I'm someone who calculates the, I, I much prefer going through the, through the, because there's a beautiful new sidewalk on East Pleasant. If I'm heading into town from UMass, um, I always go on e the East Pleasant. The sidewalk, everything there is so nice and it takes just as much time as going on North Pleasant on that little, mm -hmm. it's quicker, sure. but it's actually not. And so I, yeah, I, because because of those issues, because the sight lines are so bad, I, I choose not to go that way. But I think it will help a lot when there's no parking on that side too. But you're right. Like, I mean, still the cars are not going to be, oh, looking, you know, yeah. cars coming out of those driveways, which mostly are students are not going to be looking in the, the right direction, the, the right, direction. the correct direction. Yeah, true. Um, but yeah, so at the council meeting, it was interesting. So one person, um, Kathy Shane brought up, she really thought that it should be one way going southbound and not northbound but but the reality right is we know that like some people are trying to avoid right, including trucks are trying to avoid the right. roundabout by cutting down there and we want to really decrease it as much as possible we don't want it to be a cut through street no. even that's, though i mean that's i mean i think yeah, yeah. so that's and the other what it's going to be the it's other thing is that. she also asked if it could be um like banned like you would ban on the north end if you would ban left turns but like we've talked about how you could, if the traffic's really bad, you just go through the roundabout and come back out. But there's so many times of day and when UMass isn't in session and stuff that people can turn left, it's not an issue. So I really wouldn't support having a ban there all the time because <laughs> it would be really inconvenient for like all these times that it's fine. Even, so even now it's not, it's never, it's not really a problem turning left there. It's not really a problem. There are other places it's worse to turn left. That's for sure. Um, yeah, and if you start putting in like between these hours, then it just gets confusing. And it, it gets confusing, anyway. and yeah, exactly. The one other thing that came up, I mean, it's come up before the council a few times, and Andy Steinberg has talked about it, is that he was, you know, he's talked about the CVS, the garage behind CVS, if there was to be such a place, and structure and that really that why hasn't the council or even even just with the lot why hasn't the town ever looked more at rerouting the traffic like on north prospect street and halleck to be in the opposite direction 
so that you would like that instead of North Prospect Street being southbound, it would be like northbound and then it would also be eastbound on Halleck. It would like change the whole direction of it. But that would be something to watch like with the park as well, like if they do that, right? Because then it would come out right at the park. And that would actually encourage more people to cut on that street <laughs> to, to like, anyway, so. Um, okay, so that was all the updates I had on that. If, if does anybody else have anything on that? Um, and then just as, you know, I just wanted to provide a quick update on just Pomeroy Village and that the, you know, Guilford had presented the 25% design to the council. And it seemed like the 25% design, it just focused mainly on um, reducing the number of parking spaces that are eliminated on the corner properties and things. Um, and so it doesn't seem Guilford yet that at least at the 25% that like looking at the details, like exactly the placement of the crosswalks and the rapid rectangular flashing beacons and all those things are there, but they would be there when you come back, I guess at the 75% and it comes back to the council and DAC and stuff. So did you have anything else to add on that? So is there a time frame for that? No. Okay. Hopefully it's in January, but there's no real time frame. And so we would get um, the, no, sorry, I think wrong thing. We would get uh, the work starting this year or this coming year, I should say, on the actual putting of the roundabout in. It actually has to be done. Yes, it has to start this year. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. With this calendar year, the Pomeroy Village intersection. No, it, it, it has to start in 2022. Oh, it has to start in 2022. Okay. The fiscal year of 2022. Like yes. calendar year 2022. Oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Got it. I mean, once the work starts, like the actual construction work, like how long does a project like that typically take? Um, well, Mass Highway will give you two years to do it, but we're hoping oh. to just do it in a year. Yeah. Okay. Preferably over the summer or, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so, okay, great. Um, the last item I had, just because we had talked about this at our own meetings about the sidewalks and winter clearance. So I just mentioned on the agenda that it's on the GOL's list for bylaw reviews and updates. Um, but then I know we had talked about it just in terms of maybe providing some guidance. And I, I think too, I attended the DAC meeting the other day and they had been sending letters just about the importance of clearing the sidewalks. Um, so one of the things, and I guess Bernie, were you on the bylaw review committee? Yeah. So GOL, they, you know, they recently issued their sort of summary of the bylaws that didn't get changed by the bylaw review committee, but that some of them thought there were some bylaws that were considered for additional review or consideration. We, we, gave, them, we gave them a pretty lengthy list of <laughs> work that we thought needed to happen. There was stuff that so, we, couldn't, we right. couldn't resolve. Um, so. so there was this one about the bylaws related to snow and ice removal. And what the GOL report says is it just says that um, that it's recommended that the snow and ice bylaw in terms of the removal for, you know, the snow removal is recommended for consideration of future amendments to incorporate the policy of DPW to clear the snow and ice from certain sidewalks and to specify that more. Um, but I guess one of the question is, is like, is, I mean, Guilford, what we've heard from you is that like you will go out and as a courtesy, if it's a plowable event, you will go out and so your team will go out and plow those sidewalks. But if it's not a plowable event, you won't clear them. So it doesn't um, take away the responsibility from like the adjacent property owners to ever do anything in terms of clearing right. them. And sometimes too, like somewhere I was walking recently, it got, I mean, they get really, they can get really icy too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, after you've gone through with the plow, I think we no. need to be clear on the fact that the town is providing a one-time service, but it doesn't right. preclude you, the, the property owner, from um, any liability or, you know, any work. 
too. And continued responsibility, right? Yeah, as, yeah, as exactly. If it yeah, ices over or anything yeah. like that. So, I mean, this isn't before the TAC yet, but it was on the GOL list. You know, now it's winter. I'm hoping that the new TSO will take it up and that, you know, maybe they can come back to us. And I mean, I, I guess if it's just recommendations, like the kind of language that Marcus is talking about, I don't know whether it would all be incorporated into a bylaw because it's not like sort of legally binding, but. Well, that, or maybe was, it could even be a policy. It could just that's be a, a policy. That's just a problem we had with it, and yeah. this is a classic. I um, of the four towns I've been involved with in some right way, manner, or form of governance, uh, no one's come up with a way to ensure that sidewalks get cleared. Right. <laughs> um, and and you get into you get into battles because there's an area that uh, the DPW may traditionally clear and people believe mm. that that is a ongoing town service. And then right. um, you get into other other neighborhoods want to know, well, if you can plow such and such a parkway or a sidewalk, why can't you plug this, plow this? Oh, one? for sure. Yeah. 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 It's, you know, it snows in New England. Can. People need to clear it off. And sometimes they do and sometimes they do. I well, think I Gilford mean, and his crew should just come and plow my sidewalk specifically. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think I told you that I lived in the town. I worked in the planning department there and they had mandated that people shovel the sidewalk in front of their house. And so one of the counselor, the town counselors there, they actually, there was a big picture on the paper of them ripping up the sidewalk in front of their house so that they didn't have that responsibility. <laughs> oh my God. That town will remain nameless, but yeah. yes, <laughs> that was the well, response I mean, it, to yeah. such a mandate. So Even down in Virginia, we were required to you know, but, um, clean your sidewalk off in 24 hours but it, it, in the uk there isn't anything like that so it's just, but it i mean but it is an accessibility issue and as we talked yeah, totally. about with the bus buses too so i mean hopefully that can be something you know if we're going to write along, up a, if yeah. we're going to write up a memo for tso i'd like to write something up maybe we could ask them to look more at that because i think like along pine street is a problem because yeah. they, they'll plow the sidewalk sometimes prior well while they are doing the roads and so then it just gets on and then nobody bothers with it and it just becomes a an icy nightmare nice, yeah I, um yeah no and i've actually talked like every winter since the sidewalk one and this is outside of amherst but the route nine sidewalk like through hadley that goes to the hampshire mall like every winter it's been three winters so far this will be the fourth winter like, i've talked to senator Cummingford and the representatives and the DPWs from Hadley and and also District Two, like every year. And Hadley says it's not our job; it's a state road. And District mm -hmm. Two says it is your job. And <laughs> and then the people at the mall say we don't need to clear the mall owners. Hampshire Mall says nobody actually walks to the mall. <laughs> and so yeah, it's like no, they yeah, actually they walk to the mall all the time. <laughs> and the other thing that happens is that. Um, Right. I mean, well, one, the snow, what happens is the plows, the contractors who do the plowing, I think part of it is just the cult changing to the culture to acknowledge that there's a sidewalk there. But like if you shove all the snow up on the sidewalk, like it takes so much longer to um, melt. And that some of the adjacent businesses do the same thing. But I'm really hoping that this year will be the year that there's not a complete impasse about that. So. Um, okay. Um, all right, so our main item for, agen for the agenda was just to discuss like our TAC priorities, if we wanted to share some of our priorities with the incoming council and with the TSO, and also just to think about them ourselves and maybe just put the list out there as a public list. So when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking one about the project priorities, like in terms of like construction, but I'm also thinking about other priorities that we might wanna have on our list including like one I can think of is just like making sure that the map of the, the you know, the preferred bike and ped networks, like our priority networks gets like thinner so that we can like publicize that and things like that. Can we, um, can we just ask first that they actually give us a charge? Well, and so, I mean, I did actually meet with a town manager a few days ago. Mm -hmm. um, so he is looking at revising the charge. It is his responsibility because we are his committee. It's his responsibility to revise the charge. Um, and some of it was he was looking for guidance from the council. 
yeah um about what our charge should be um you know initially i think there was some pushback like when the council was first created there were some counselors who were very adamant that like stuff shouldn't be going to tack that like that they as the keepers of the public way that it should all go to the council and i think over time some of that softened but he's really been looking for the council to provide some of that guidance so i think that's one reason that we don't have a new charge but he did say he's going to work on the new charge and he's also going to help with us recruiting new members which is my 6b but i'll just give you a quick update on that right now so i mean currently right so like kim's kim's term her first term or last term officially like ended last year and mine ended this year and then the other three members marcus bernie and bruce you all of your terms and in the spring mm -hmm. um which I guess, I mean, of course you can roll over and continue. I guess, Bruce, though, you, I think you've been doing this a while. <laughs> so maybe you might not. <laughs> um, but like, it is really, it is really, you know, it is really important to start to pull in additional people. And I talked with him about the concerns that we had raised just about diversifying our committee and so on too, so. But the, yeah, I mean, what happened to our new guy? Hold on. Well, yeah. he hasn't given up. I guess okay, but, good, um, good. I'll, I'll check in with him again. But I mean, I just remember even when I applied to the TAC, it was sort of frustrating. Like you can, you know, you send in the form and you say you're interested and it can be months as, you know, as the office is working on other appointments and like so but you on. don't even hear back. And you no, don't even don't really hear it, yeah. like it's not it's really hard to like even check in and eventually mm -hmm. it's like oh, okay now you have an interview so i mean i'll yeah. definitely reach out to holden and make sure so, some of some of us still around some of us including a council a counselor yeah. to have raised the issue so. of overload in the town manager's office oh definitely there's uh, paul has a, a huge number of direct reports he's just gained two right um, absolutely this last council uh, action and um uh, I mean, I've been pretty vocal about, and I'm, I'm, it's not a knock on Paul. He's a very capable no. guy. And you can go back to when the town was first hiring, you'll find my letter to the selectman saying, hire Paul Bachelman. He's good. Um, <clears throat> it took him a while to listen to me, but they eventually got around <laughs> to it. Um, but, uh, you know, he's, he's just overloaded and there's oh, gotta be sure. some way to hand this off. And I think the council is also coming to the, uh, recognition that even though they are the keepers of the public way, um, they need some filters and uh, they need some planning. And, and you know, those those mega hour council meetings are beginning to take their toll. And yeah. I, I think they'll begin to realize, right. that, uh, you, you know, you, you may, there may be better ways of managing some of this stuff. Well, and I think that Amherst is lucky that, I mean, I've talked to even, you know, people in Northampton or something, um, but that Amherst, I mean, the advisory committees, like we do have a lot of advisory committees. I know the town has tried to get rid of some, but then we've created new ones. So we actually haven't, I don't think we've actually reduced the number of committees in Amherst so much um, mm -hmm. to what you were saying. Um, but it seems like, I mean, the council, the council's busy. They're not, they can't be experts at everything. And so I feel like the advisory committees in Amherst can provide like some really valuable help to committees because I mean, because to join a committee, like you have to show like a certain interest and expertise and things like that and not counselors, counselors can't know everything about everything and they don't have that time to like study things. So no. I really see, I mean, we're advisory. And so I think it's, you know, we're more of an asset than anything. So, I mean, it seems like people have sort of come around and said, oh yes, the TAC can do things that are useful. Um, and um, so that's good, but but I agree. I mean, I, I agree that the town manager's office is overloaded. And I think it's really challenging too with these appointments is like every June, right? I mean, that's when a lot of the appointments end is like there's like hundreds and hundreds of slots that have to be <laughs> refilled or people mm -hmm. have to be renewed. So, but, but he said, you know, he's going to ask the, um, the Irish people in his office to like work on it too. So. So that's what we can do. And hopefully we will see a new charge sooner than later. So, um, all right, so can we talk about, um, so we'd started at the last meeting that we had, which was in 
November, you know, before the hall, before Thanksgiving and so on. Like Gilbert had pulled up the longer, the list of the overall projects. But what do, what do people think if we talk about, you know, maybe, you know, if we, if we want to maybe decide on maybe our like top five priorities in terms of like projects, but then also to some of these other projects that are in construction, including like, I'd really would like to see that map finished so we can do that and some of those other priorities, so. Does that make in sense? Terms of, in terms of the map, yeah, we've got um, um, a GIST program uh, that is looking for uh, internships for master students. So I think that that could be a good, um, you know, a high quality person to have work on that. Can we make it a capstone project? So it's like their final year thing. It is. I mean, that's what it would be for them. Oh, okay, cool. It's a one year professional master's and they have to do a practicum. So, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So they can fix Amherst and then uh, <laughs> be done. Well, I don't know. I don't know, Guilford, <laughs> would your, Guilford, would DPW be able to use somebody like that, like a GIS intern to help with some of the GIS stuff? Can't hear you. Um, we could do that. I mean, we actually, Next next semester we're only going to have one when we'll have one intern here. That's it. So we could take we can do use have two or three. Oh, okay. When you your other GIS intern had like moved on, right? He, so, yeah, he went to a intern. He went to a co-op position in in oh. Washington D.C. and came back and said, "I don't want to do this anymore." <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Got a taste of the K Street life. So, so in in um, so in the town, like in terms of town offices with GIS. So, does is plan does planning do GIS too? Do you guys oh, yeah. all? I just didn't know like how that you know like had all the engineering pictures and all that stuff is spread out among staff. So we have um, three members of our staff that are really good at GIS. Uh -huh. three, three planners, not me but three other planners and they right. work with um mike warner and it right yep yeah and mike does i know because mike supported the dab so mm -hmm. okay so okay. um if this seems possible so i'm you know i'm 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 speaking now in my um actual job hat here um i'm a I'm in the geography program in the geosciences department at UMass and the GIST master's program is a big part of what geography is. And the advisor for that program is, just sent out a call for projects and practicums, I don't know, a week and a half ago. So I think what it would require is a bit of a mutual conversation about what would be sort of the right level of expectations and support and, and time, um, yeah. And, and what kind of data needs and GIS needs and, and, you know, the advisor as well as the student would probably have to think about if it's the appropriate level and amount of work. So is, is this a class on top of other classes? The, it's their final practicum. So it's a one year professional masters. Um, most of them are now in their second semester. And so they would either do it. They, they tend to either do their practicum in the spring semester or the summer. So they just do it for credit, Guilford. I think they do like the internship for credit. Yeah, ideally it would be nice to pay them a little bit, but you don't have to pay them a lot. You know, like you don't have to pay them a salary. You could pay them a stipend kind of thing. So, so I guess my, I didn't say that correctly. So is this person taking other classes in addition to doing the practicum? Yeah, this spring, yes, they would be taking other classes. If you did it this summer, then they might, they wouldn't be probably. Okay. Oh, so just in terms of availability, right? Like if it was like, realistically, Eve, if they're taking classes, what is that like 10 hours a week or 10 to 15 hours a week or? Yeah. You know how probably 15, 15, 15 ish, Yeah. So. so. So I think it would be fine. I mean, if they want to, you want the person to reach out, we can talk a little more, Eve. Right, that'd be great. Well, and Guilford, you had mentioned too, I mean, in addition to like our routes, right? Even like some of those underlying data layers, right? Like that whole plan, like the road layer they used and things that needed editing. And 
Yep. I don't know, maybe of other layers that need editing and stuff. So I know when I was a student, a grad student, I spent a whole summer editing GIS layers. So. And a lot of what these guys are learning is not just mapping, like they're learning spatial data analysis and Python and, you know, they're doing a whole bunch of yeah. other interesting stuff. Great. That sounds like that might work out. And Eve, I did um, send that call for like interns to somebody else, another department today too. So we'll see if it works out. Um, okay, so, so the last time we were talking, and, you know, we talked about some of the different projects. So Guilford, are you the keeper of the master list of those? Keeper of my list? Well, you also had our list, like our list. <laughs> I know you um... have the two lists. And so, I mean, from the time I've been on the TAC, which now I've been on the TAC for two years, we've never like had our own new list. I mean, we've always worked off the list of the requests that came in and so on. Let me see. Why don't you talk about something else and I'll find okay. it. Okay, okay. So I'm going to leave now. I have yeah, to work on my good. budget that is due tomorrow, and I haven't done a very good job of it. So um, I'm going to go do that. But it was very good to see you, and happy holidays. All right. To everybody. All right. Thanks, Thanks, Chris. Chris. Okay. Chris. Take, take, care. take care, Chris. Happy budgeting. Happy budgeting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, Tracy, I'm a little confused about yeah. what the agenda is at the moment. So as far as priorities go. So okay. are you talking about like what our committee's priorities are? Well, that's what the, you know, A, we need a charge. I agree with what, right. yep. you know, that is essential. I, I think that there's a, like the two different components of it. Like as, as I started that conversation, I was trying to break it down, right? So there's, what we talked about at the, la the last time we met is Guilford had pulled up the list like of all the different projects. Right, and we talked about, for example, like South, the South Amherst Common had sort of like fallen off the radar a little yeah. bit because I had never heard about it since I joined the TAC, but I know like other people had worked on it before. Yeah, we worked on um, it a lot. a lot, right? So just to kind of bring those back. So I, I mean, the, you know, the, the issues are for some of this stuff is the pandemic just changed the traffic. Oh, of course, of course. That's yeah. where we work. But I, but I'm, I'm. But I guess I mean so. I this is a good question, Kim. So part of it is just if we want to say, you know, as the new council meets, and as the new TSO meets, whoever is going to be on the new TSO, and just say, well, hi, we're TAC, and, um, you know, there's these different projects that have been on our list for a while, and you know, the ones that are the most important. But I do think about them in terms of the construction priorities, but then also our priorities as the committee as the things that you brought up with like in terms of the charge and membership and and some of these tasks like mapping and things like that that aren't construction projects right does well, it seem kind of like messy to put them all together because yeah i think because okay because i think you know because it, it feels like two separate bins sure no i agree it feels like two separate like agendas okay because there's like you know i i because obviously i feel like our committee is 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 great and we have a lot of expertise and we have a lot of goodwill on this committee mm -hmm. a lot of like people who are thinking you know in different ways and have different expertises right. and and we are like like we're into streets and like we're into like everyone using the streets and you know that's what we're about we're not about i i feel like we're not you know we're not biased we just want like everyone to be using the streets and everyone to have access and mm -hmm. that's our value that we bring forward like sure. we're not like about any one particular thing we're about like right. it for everyone so that's what I feel like we bring and and we have expertises like yours on and and Marcus and Bert, you know, we all have our own like separate realm that we mm -hmm. we command, right? And together we're a great force, you know. And and so sure. you know, but we are. No, it's and true. We are. And like, and so like. I feel like we're just a force for good and we want what's good. And if the 
you know, we have to kind of bring that forward to the TSO and the council because like when, when they started, you know, dismissing us, I was like, you can't, you all can't do all this stuff. Like, of course, right. we're all like, we're all like geeks. We like what we're doing here. And like, none of you are going to do that stuff. So let us do it. So, and so there's that piece, like there's the, like here, the TSO is this set of geeks doing this awesome stuff for everybody. Mm -hmm. And there's like, then there's a specific projects, which it seems like at sure. some level, like, yes, we should have like priorities because I think we should get back to that because that's also like unbiased and just like a way of prioritizing. And I feel like we should get back on these very unbiased kind of like ways of presenting ourselves to the TSO and everyone as for our relevance, you know? Sure. So we need t-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I've, I've well, I mean, you. so I think, I mean, part of it, right, it like ties into our charge. So when I was talking to the town manager, right, I mean, we're not, we're very not project specific to like, I think that's part of what you're talking about too. Right, like we want to improve it. because our vision. And so, right, when the council is looking at a specific section of the street or specific intersection or specific plan, like they're focused on that. But like one thing with TAC, you know, and its predecessors has always been like, it's more of a vision about that we want to create, we want the transportation network and system in Amherst to be safer, more accessible, more equitable, more sustainable, like all of those pieces, right? We spent, we, I mean, we were talking earlier tonight, just even about like snow and the sidewalks and things like that, right? We want the network to work. And so, um, I mean, I think we can share that vision. I mean, some of that is in our charge. You know, we can say that that's what we see as our, you know, our charge and our vision. Um, <clears throat> but I also think, right, I mean, one of the things when I first joined the TAC or even before I had joined the TAC, like I worked with Eve, we had, a, you know, grad students and others who were helping about just even prioritizing um, as part of the complete streets plan. Yeah. And I know Guilford's still been working with a consultant on that to submit something to the state. Um, and just to come up with a system to say, I mean, because one thing that will happen, right, is that, I mean, there are some new, new counselors who have certain ideas about, well, this is a priority for them or, um, and are those projects also gonna be priorities for the town? I mean, there's already some linkages that have been identified like over and over again similar to Pomeroy Village, which has been talked about for redesign for a few decades. And so some of those linkages and projects have been around for a long time. And so um, some of them don't have funding yet, or, but we can still say that it seems like from our kind of vision about like, what are the next critical steps? Um, we'd like to see some of those. Not that we are rejecting other ones too, it's just like there's limited resources and stuff. I mean, in some cases it doesn't, I mean, we could say, you know, with the new council, maybe it doesn't matter what we say are our, our priorities, but just from our perspective about, you know, accessibility and things that we feel like these particular sections are really important. Like it came up at our last meeting, um, that North Pleasant Street section that we've now walked twice, like north of Eastman Lane. Like we saw the section, the parts of it that are really bad, right? Where there's almost like no sidewalk and where there's no crosswalks and people are just streaming across the road and where the person got killed and like all these different pieces. So, I mean, Guilford mentioned then, right, that that had been previously identified as one of the priority places for improvements by TAC. That it doesn't have any funding yet. But like, would we want to share that that's one of the priorities and as so we see them? I feel like, like, you know, doing that is a, is a reasonable thing. Like, I feel like we've, we've thought about this for a long time and, um, you know, but, but, and, and maybe publish, you know, saying what our top priority is will be very meaningful, but I worry that if we go down to like number five, it no, I mean, like, I wouldn't, I know, would just say like, how do we rank that? Because we don't, we don't have our, we, 
we need to publish our ranking system. And but I don't think we, really but free. even, but even with the ranking system and even with the state's complete streets plans, like what I've heard from different planners and what I've seen from the plans um, is that, I mean, if a, I mean, some of the plans have, you know, a list of like 20 projects or 30 projects or even, I mean, I think, um, you know, Jeff McCullough down at PVPC, he said he's seen plans that have like 75 projects listed, that they're just, they're, they're ones that have been identified um, and that, you know, piece by piece towns start to fund them. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't want us to say like, this is our number one priority, this is our number two, because one, I, I don't think, I'm not sure how much weight our rankings have, but I would say maybe like these are the top five that we're aware of, you know, from past discussions and things, or maybe these are our top 10 unranked or something. Also, I mean, you know, I think when you start publishing that kind of stuff, I worry because, you know, it all seems money dependent and source dependent. And, and then people, you know, say, wait, why is this project getting funded over those five oh. projects that you just listed, you know, because people don't under, you know, I don't, I don't want us to look like we're, you know, making biased choices, I guess. I don't know. But we're not, but we're advisory. So we're, we're yeah. not really making the yeah. choices. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, right. And I mean, I think people will like the town, you know, the town staff will look for funding where funding's available. But if, like if things, I mean, I guess the question is what if things come up that aren't like on anyone's list and all of a sudden, <laughs> but is that, does that mean that all of a sudden they are priorities or does that, how does that work? Or it right. means that there's money for something very specific, right? But so, I don't know. Eve, thoughts? Yeah, so I have two comments. One is um, I, would, I would suggest that you guys might feel comfortable um, passing on to the council the two top priorities that, yeah. that, that the TAC has had for the last several years, which is North Pleasant and East Pleasant. Um, you know, they're, they're both really strong for a whole lot of reasons. And the TAC has been pretty consistent about saying that those are the top two. Mm -hmm. So that would be one thought. The, the other thought I have is you guys might take a step back and, and think about whether you want to make any suggestions. This was, I don't know, again, you remember when um, the subcommittee came up with all those matrices, we also came up with like a, a list of things to focus on. And one of them was to, to sort of think creatively about alternative budget um, sources. So, you know, whether like um, um, a couple of the plans that we came across when we were doing our research, um, towns had systems that, for example, if a developer um, came in that was gonna bring in a lot of parking, they had to contribute to something that would basically create no net gain in, drive, in cars. You know, so um, anyway, there, so there could be a system like that. There could be a system that says if um, parking requirements are waived, that they need to, you know, contribute to a fund to provide alternative transportation. I mean, I'm not saying that you guys can decide what it should be, but in my opinion, there's a huge interest from many sectors in this town to, to have much more robust and safer bicycling and pedestrian um, infrastructure. And it just happens at a snail pace because um, the town is always waiting for, for grant funding. And it seems to me that there, um, there might be an argument to be made for the town to have some sort of consistent source of internal funding. And, and again, the TAC might not be the one to decide what that is, but the suggestion could be made anyway. I just think that there are these sort of bigger picture ideas that you guys might also bring besides just this project, this project, this project. Yeah. And I feel like that's our strength is, is the, the thinking and the planning and, and the amount of discussion that we've had for many years consistently about just these kinds of things, so. That makes sense. Maybe you want to, I mean, what you're saying, I mean, you could always, you know, take a try at like writing some kind of up, but 
I mean, I think that's important. I mean, that's what the TAC adds. The main thing is like, we're taking a more comprehensive look and we've like thought about them for a long time. Yeah. But, well, so if we were gonna send, I mean, what do other people think, Bruce or Marcus or, right? I mean, if we were gonna send any kind of message or, you know, tell, the TSO and the new counselors about ourselves, like what would we say or? Well, I, mean, I agree with Eve. I think we should keep emphasizing North Pleasant Street and East Pleasant. That if, if funding opportunities come up, that those are our two priorities and explain why. Um, certainly North Pleasant Street, it seems obvious uh, because of the apartment complexes and near the university. And also we've talked about better lighting needed along there and then East Pleasant because it's disconnected from the downtown, from the main part of town and kids can't walk to school who live up in those neighborhoods because there's no connection right now and so forth. Yeah. But, but I think it would also be fine to have uh, either a list or just mentioning other projects that we are looking at for the future. I, I think that would be a good idea as well. That could include South Amherst. Well, and I, but I even like Central Amherst, right? I mean, so, I mean, I see some vision around like around um, East Hadley Road and like connecting to Groff, right? Because that's more recent and they're still trying to work on that connectivity. Um, and also there's been talk about other improvements along 116, like to make it a more traffic calmed corridor all the way along you know, and then tie in with like Hickory Ridge and like all these other things that weren't necessarily on, you know, in some of the plans, you know, five years ago or whatever. Um, I mean, to me, so I don't think I would make it all, you know, north of the university and yeah. like that's northern section of East Pleasant. But I mean, we could just talk about how we're really committed to these corridors. You know, and we, including 116 and like these connections and the accessibility for the populations that need it. I mean, and some of the improvements that are happening downtown, like they, they're great. So, I mean, I'm glad to see some of those as well. All of them. I mean, even just even repainting the crosswalks, like they, which is, I think awesome. they make a huge difference. <laughs> so great. Guilford, those are awesome. All the and the bricks and all of it it's amazing yeah yeah also yeah. Uh, and this is a question for Guilford would are we to have any more input in the changes on uh, Belchertown Road that the state might also help with is that an ongoing project it is it's still kind of being uh, messed around with by the staff upstairs mm -hmm. but is that something we would look at again in the future about sidewalks and bike paths and bike lanes along there? Yes. Okay, okay, good. Well, then we should mention that too. Because that's another main corridor, another right. factor. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think that's part of why we wanted the map too. Like, and we can see like, it's like connecting these. I mean, do we want it? So Guilford, do you have like the list we had talked about before? Did you find it? <laughs> Unfortunately, I did. <laughs> it's a reminder of thoughts so past. So, so this this is the big list. Are you sharing Guilford? Yes. Yeah, can you see it? We yeah, won't yeah. call it no, we won't go. call it Guilford's list, we'll like, but this is the hey, list we're, we're this is the list we're working on. Right, yeah. So the this far in attack priority column, this is when you guys said you were interested in it. Or you moved it from the other page over. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, so I mean we know that these things don't happen that fast. I mean, 
so I guess a question would be like Kim and the committee. I mean, if we were to, again, I, I really don't feel comfortable like itemizing in particular, like this is the most important, this, but I mean, how do we feel about sharing, you know, a number of these items and just saying these have been on the tax radar, you know, for a long time. And mm -hmm. we feel like they're all essential parts, you yeah, know, of building a better network in Amherst. Mm -hmm. it, connecting village centers. Right, um, and the connectivity. And you know what? What I guess, um, what, you know, what are the common elements in this that we tend to focus on? I mean, one of the things that we do is we keep insisting that you should be able to get from point A to point B without having to drive. Driving isn't the only way to get around. Um, are there other pieces that, that if you do drive, you drive, you drive safely, you drive with respect to um, people in non-motorized transportation, that you, uh, you have a place to land your vehicle that's, um, that's safe and convenient. Um, I mean, those are some kind of general themes that we've, we keep coming back and talking about. I don't know if any of that makes sense. Also the safety for pedestrians and bikers. bikers. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So Guilford, why why would you not want so so if we didn't number these, for example, if we didn't like item like say this was our top priority, why would you not want something like this to be out there? So I don't, I mean, I can like Guilford answer, but. Um, well, I, I'm very interested in hearing Guilford answer oh. because, because I feel like it's important because, because, because you're the keeper of this list. And, and I, I'm, it's really, I'm really just asking a question. I really don't know why. And maybe you don't want to answer, which is okay. Um, well, if you actually look at the list, you'll see that things just pop in. Yeah. It'll show up. Right. And people ask, well, why does it show up? And it's, it's because someone downtown makes it, tells it to go in the list. Um, mm -hmm. It just seems, it's just kind of haphazard. Well, that's a good word for it, but it just kind of, it just happens. And trying to explain it is um, sometimes difficult and, and the reason behind it. Right. Um, like, Mill Lane improvements in Kellogg Street, they just popped in. I mean, or Kellogg Street just popped in. And uh -huh. that Mill Lane will go out together as a, a project next year. Um, North Pleasant Street, something we work on. I can explain that one easy. Um, West Street and Pomeroy intersection, that wasn't on this list last year. That just popped in. So, so because of the the i don't know again haphazard kind of nature of some of these so it makes it difficult for you as a public official to justify what's on here is is that it it makes it makes it just kind of people ask why was this ahead yeah. of this one and right right but what if this wasn't itemized to like you know, what if just the projects were there and not the priority for them? I mean, that's fine too. I mean, but people will say, well, we should move this up. Or why isn't this moved up? And yeah, I just don't, I just don't want to deal with it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I do understand that. I mean, but as soon as you build a list, you, yeah, oh. I'm sorry. As soon as you build a list, you're, you're implying some sort of priority. People are going to look at uh, it. And say, no, I, well, I think that's where, we don't itemize it and and also i mean right Gil, you know guilford's a staff member and it's like the council and he's on executive in terms of saying like this is i mean it's like you need the other support of these other people who are in the government to move it forward so i guess i, mean, I, guess, I guess my concern with publishing something like that is just that yeah you are then beholden i mean it, he gets complaints all the time he's responsible right now of course stuff i don't know 
Well, and I think, I mean, one thing is, right, even, I think it will be helpful when we've done the map, right, and we can say that these are, you know, our corridors that we've identified. Exactly. Um, but like, when I look at sidewalk and crosswalks, like I know, you know, some people, I know people have come to me and said, I'd really like to have a sidewalk in like X neighborhood, or I really want a crosswalk here. And like, I know that it's not safe. Like the crosswalk wouldn't be safe unless you also do other improvements in that area. Like the, one of the most dangerous things to me about a crosswalk is you can't just like paint a crosswalk Right. And be like, okay, everybody cross because, you know, what if it's like on 116? Well, I mean, this is one case I was thinking of for 116. Or what if it's, you know, some other busy street and it's actually going to be a lot less safe if people say, oh, look, a crosswalk. I'm just going to walk across it. Like you have to have like all the other things around it to, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, make it safe, cool. including signage and like traffic calming and narrowing the road or having a roundabout or whatever you're going to do to to make it actually safe to be there as a pedestrian. Um, but I think, I mean, so I understand not wanting to publish a list per se, especially one that says one, two, three, like ranks everything specifically. But I mean, I think we could share, you know, the things that have been priorities just because, um, well, they've been around for you know, like in a you know i mean you know like our kind yeah. of top five priorities or even like right so even what came up again about the south amherst common or things like places where you need better connectivity and you need better safety you need accessibility mm -hmm. um i think we could do it in a sort of general way um and i mean in things like um Station Road, right? I mean, nobody, or even that little bridge on 116, like on West Street, the one that's just north of Pomeroy, like that, that, bridge. that little pedestrian bridge has been closed for a long time, right? I mean, people would really like to see that reopen. <laughs> so, um, but, what's going on with that road bridge at Pot Lane? Oh, see, this is the other thing is I forget to put things on here. <laughs> Why is the state funding it? Um, when you, do you does anybody here hunt? No. no. Do you hunt, Guilford? No. Oh. So when when you buy a hunting license, um, a lot of the a lot of the hunting license money goes to different state agencies, and one agency is there to improve wildlife habitat. So they actually have a program which improves bridges and, co and culvert right. crossings. Um, so they're, they're interested in this one and improving the, the habitat crossing. So we actually have a grant for this bridge that we're designing a replacement. So That's exciting, cool. Gilford, Wait, congratulations. So isn't that like a, it's like fish and wildlife trail program or something, right? I've seen that. Is that the one you're talking it's about? It's DER, isn't it? D yeah, or DCR program. D it's DER, Department D -E of Ecological oh. Restoration. Okay, I yeah. The I, right. it's, an IL, it's an ILE grant. Nice, nice. I, I don't it's know what ILE stands for. <laughs> so I'm that's so for like excited. We're getting improving a Plumbrook conservation area, basically. Is the idea behind it. Would that be it? Um, or just like... No, it's, it's just an impacted bridge. I mean, it's a culvert okay. right now. And it's going to become a bridge. So. Cool. Great. That's great. Sorry, I, I just hadn't put it on there. I realized I need to put it on there. Well, I guess, you know, if Pomeroy Village is improved, I mean, one priority I can see is improving some of the connectivity with Pomeroy Village to like Hickory Ridge, but then also over towards the South Common, if there's ways to do that. Like I know the road is narrow and that there's wetlands and. Well, the, the only problem with too. that road is there's, there's a bridge that has to be changed there too. Right, no, I know. That That's the only... I mean, yeah, Plumbrook. If you're yeah. going, if you're going from, yeah, pop, if you're going from the intersection, like over to South mm -hmm. Amherst. Well, there's also that dude's um, like run off into the street too, right? Um, yes. Yeah. So, okay. 
I mean, if you guys want to, if you guys want to say you, you know, these are the things, I mean, the only thing I would say is that there's certain things here that are happening and there's no certain things that haven't got a date yet. Right. So you can, but, you can tell the ones that are scheduled. Well, and you have the TAC priorities. So I guess for these priorities, so these all happened before I joined the TAC. So did the TAC, and when they got on this list, did the tax actually like vote on them and say like, this is our priority? Is that what yes. happened? It, okay. And it came from this list. <laughs> oh, of these. Yeah. Project, the requested. Requests. I think there's, yeah, that's it right there. So. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know, how do we, how, what's the best way for us to proceed fellow TAC members? To... I think we should put together a group of projects we consider priority for the TAC. Right, okay. I don't think we need to provide a one, two, three, four, five. List. No, I definitely not. Provide yeah. a group mm -hmm. of something and say, sure. look, these are the highest impact for the town. Right. Deal with them. And then, you know. Yeah. Why don't well, you I, also add a bit of narrative about why another project might pop onto the list as happening? You know, if there's a particular grant right. or opportunity, like uh -huh. put that text in there. That's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. Agreed. And oh, I mean, you, we definitely need narrative. And then we also have, I mean, I agree with you, Kim, like we could have two separate things about, you know, in terms of projects, but also like internally. Yeah. Or things like we want to see happen with TAC itself. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll do. I mean, so we've now talked about this list a couple different times. Our meetings. Do we want to identify some? Well, I, I mean, think I like the. I, I think it, I like the right? idea of focusing on like with the sidewalks and crosswalks. Like I see. Um, I mean, like, for example, like in the downtown, I think that that works really important to continue like creating good sidewalks and crosswalks downtown. But I mean, we already have three recommended, right? So, so let's so, start from there. But I get, but I guess are those still the top? So wait, can you go back to the list? So those are, we still consider those to be the top three priorities. Is that what we're saying? Which? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Marcus is referring, I think, to the ones that are like where the TAC had already prioritized them previously, right? North Pleasant yeah, so Street got, updates, mm -hmm. and then, and then the pot, pot wine. I mean, make, can I make it bigger? Pot, yeah. wine doesn't, pot wine doesn't seem as quite as important, some of it. Are. Well, there's been a, well, there was a significant, not significant, I shouldn't say significant, there was a good group of people that were coming and making a good point yeah. about the issues of getting to the bus stop at yeah. oh, I agree. on West Street. Right. And so I, I think that was kind of where it was. So it's it's yes, it's potential intersection improvements, but it's because people can't get to the bus safely. Yeah. Well, so, there's and there's a soccer fields right there in the neighborhood. Right. And you have the bus yeah. stops on both sides of the street. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no crossing between them. Right, 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 right. Very, it's Be not. a great roundabout, but anyway. Yeah. Well, that was the plan, I think, right? You got to start <laughs> having more roundabouts. That was, so. that's actually long-term when we were talking about it, that would be the long-term solution. Yeah. So if we were to prioritize, it would be North Pleasant, north of the university, um, East Pleasant. Um, and I mean, Groff Park, Pot Wine, and um, Pomeroy Village. I mean, all those are priorities. Everything mm -hmm. along 116, I think, the whole 116, yeah. But I mean, 116, I would stay, steer clear of stuff that's already been funded, right? No, but we can yeah. still say, well, I, I think this is fun. You know, this is priorities for any funding that would become available. This is where you should push it. Okay. If stuff's already funded, it's I, done. 
It's but, out of make, my... but so well, one of the things is like, so take Pomeroy Village, Marcus. So the intersection itself, there's some fun funding to improve the intersection, like to create a roundabout. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, some people have said, well, are you going to make a sidewalk go this direction or that direction, right? It basically, I mean, my understanding is the funding will end, basically. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty but close to the intersection. Not... And so, like, if we're talking about networks, then part of it is extending mm -hmm. some of it to Hickory Ridge or to towards so Crocker, the... like all that, the connectivity piece of it. So the project is the connectivity to the village. It is not the village center. Right. right. The village center has already been taken care of. It's already been funded. This would be a right. different village. project. Right. Yeah. Expanding. Correct. Yeah. So, and then and then also like Kendrick Park is on the list, but like so some of that doesn't all have funding. But then I do. Right. Well, yeah. I, yeah. I do like the idea of tying that into like improvements to the downtown, continued okay. downtown crosswalks so, and stuff. So too. so so Tracy. Yes. I think we've come up with um, yes. one, two, three, four, five, six different projects that I think um, okay. receive no particular priority and are oh. all super important. So let me list them here. And it yes. may potentially be something that we could, you know, put out there. So um, um, North Pleasant, um, North Pleasant, the North Pleasant piece that we've discussed right. and, and, and ad nauseum. Um, the e East Pleasant, um, the South Common um, upgrades and, and mm -hmm. revisiting all that, um, pot wine intersection, the um, Pomeroy Village um, connections, and um, Kendrick Park. Um, revisions of that so so i wonder that that seems great um and yeah. and something that that i think all of us can totally sure. agree on and could be a six that's six yep. different One, things two, three, four, that we could six. say yep. in say. no particular order are is, are important projects so we yeah are, we are interested in improving and um we've thought a lot about. Well, that sounds good. I mean, I guess I would extend the Kendrick Park piece to also include, right, so there is some funding to include along Triangle Street, like, you know, going yeah. towards a school, and then also, I mean, there's a few pieces there that could have, like, better connectivity, um, and then also just that roundabout, like, if maybe looking if the roundabout needs any improvements, too. Okay. How do people feel about that? I, I Just like it's a whole downtown connection. Sure. Yeah, I would, I would emphasize safety with that as well. Right. So could we say, um, could we kind of group these all together and say Kendrick Park slash um, Triangle Street? In or connecting to the community park, whatever, War Memorial and the school thing. But yeah. And, and in addition, we have our own TAC priorities, which it include um, the charge and um, the network kind of, you know, the net, publishing the network. The maps, right. The maps, right. Right. And also acquiring new members. Maps and, and members. Maps. Yeah, and yeah, yep. Yep, I think, yeah, I mean, I could see us writing that up as like two separate things. Yes, agreed. So yeah, we can, um, I can work on something and maybe we could talk about it. So this segues perfectly into our next, um, into our last item, which is about when we're meeting next. <laughs> so, I mean, what do we think about if we, I mean, we could write up something briefly, you know, as I would write up two different things just about like, these are our priorities and Guilford can put them on his list as like, the TAC has identified these six priorities. Um, and then, so we could share those and then just also just, you know, as a brief kind of introduction to the TAC and like what our internal priorities are. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, if we, I would like to, you know, run it, I don't know how much I would write something up over the break, um, over the holidays, but 
it, I think this can be pretty short. I do think it's nice to have some narrative about it. Um, yeah, it doesn't need to be a whole like book. No, no. I mean, I would yeah. like one or two pages at the most right. of all yeah, this yeah. stuff. Right. Yeah. And just to introduce ourselves. And then when the TSO is formed, we could like present it to TSO. Yeah, yeah I think to the council. Yep. Okay. I still and vote for TAC t shirts, though. <laughs> TAC t shirts. Everybody knows who we are. Yeah. And I, I also feel like maybe, you know, at the first TSO meeting, this is something we could present. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that happens with the council, like I'm hoping that we will get a liaison from the council again to like come to the TAC meetings. Yeah. You know, not all of the committees have liaisons, but there is something at the end of each council meeting where they have liaison reports. Yeah. And there's almost... I mean, for the majority of committees, nobody ever presents or anything, but I've always wondered, you know, if we wanted to just as it's something we wanted to do as a tack, like every couple months or something, you know, we, we let our liaison or we share like, hey, this is what tax done. Because one thing we could also write up a little bit is just what the tack has done in the last year, right, that we've helped with like Pomeroy and we help with Kendrick and we yeah. weighed in on these other things. We came back to life after COVID and we you know, provided some useful services. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just like a little bit about like we are TAC because I guess there's a lot of conceptions about what TAC is. So we could just tell yeah. the counselors what we are. So. We well, are amazing. Important. <laughs> do we do we have a next uh, next meeting date? Yeah. So so okay. traditionally, right? We've been meeting on the first. Thursday and the third Thursday, does that still work for January? So that would be on the 6th, January 6th, and that would be on the 20th. Yep. Do we feel like that works? Yeah. That sounds good. Okay. And um, the yeah. town manager has said he will, you know, definitely start like work with the outreach people in the town manager's office to help recruit and so on. And again, if we like reach out to networks, I really have been trying, you know, trying to reach out to people more to try to get some more voices. So I, I wonder if this is a bit of hubris, but um, perhaps we could request that the town manager come and um, we can talk with him at the you know first 15 minutes of our next meeting about our priorities and where who we are and, and sure. what we're interested in doing or in the next, you know, sometime yeah. soon, because, because maybe that will help him, like, Realize maybe you need to need help, but maybe yeah. just hearing from us for 15 minutes might be useful. Well, what do we yeah. think about if, for the next meeting, if we have something drafted about what we want to say? I mean, I, I mean, I don't feel like this is a super priority in terms of us sending this out and editing and make sure it's in the council's hands on January 3rd. Like the council has a lot to absorb yeah. <laughs> and they need to create their committees and so on. But maybe we could do a little bit of that on the 6th and then we could try to invite him like to the yeah. meeting like later in the month. That sounds sounds like a plan. Yeah. Okay. Huh. Sounds good to me. So it's 630 everyone. All right. That sounds good. To and Bruce can do his official turn. job. Oh, I so I second. Oh, okay. uh, I, I just uh, had a quick, sorry. I had a quick question for Guilford, actually. <laughs> so Guilford, now that the um, TSO, you know, has moved forward with their public ways plan and, um, you know, in terms of their procedures for dealing with public ways requests and so on, like I had, and I'd asked the town manager just about cleaning up our website a little, but there's still that form that people can fill out on the TAC page can we just like remove it yep and he said that it's pretty i mean when i asked him about updates to the tac website he said they're in your you know amber in your hands or something yeah so, we just take them off so let's just take that thing off because i think it's just going to confuse people and you could even refer people like tso you know the council has adopted this public ways criteria for requests or something yeah because i'm sure the new counselors will have many requests but thank you thank you all right Yes, I'm ready to adjourn. I apologize. Yes. Great. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank Bye. you. All right. Bye. 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 Great to see y'all. Nice to see all of you too.